Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over drawing ray diagrams for convex lenses. And this is going to be our general setup that we're going to use. And this is, I think, what you see most of the time in a textbook. Here we have our convex or our converging lens. And we have some parts of this diagram, I think, that we should just be aware of. One of them is the principal axis. This is this white line that runs horizontal through the center of the lens. Then we have our focal point. And we have the point we call 2F. And the focal point is at a distance of one focal length from the lens. And 2F is twice as far away. So Okay. Uh, so, tadi kita belajar F kecil ni adalah focal length. Okay. Jarak dia daripada optical center sehinggalah focal point. Okay. So, katakanlah focal length bagi kanta ni adalah 2 cm. Ha, jadi awak pun ambil pembaris, letak kosong dekat optical center. Lepas tu tanda 2 cm. Cari 2 cm, lepas so, tanda. Dah jumpa 2 cm, tanda uh, bulat. Menunjukkan itu adalah focal point. So, label dia adalah F. Belah kanan focal length. Belah kiri pun sama juga. Daripada optical center uh, dan Uh, cari 2 cm tanda satu titik uh, dan label sebagai F. Maksudnya 2 cm ke kanan, 2 cm ke kiri adalah F. Okey, 2 F ni apa? Okey, kalau F kita adalah 2 cm, so 2 F 2 darab 2. So maksudnya 4 cm. Uh, jadi biasanya kita akan kena uh, tulis sampai 2 F lah bila kita nak lukis ray diagram ni. Okey, uh, jadi kalau F kita 2 cm kanan, 2 cm kiri So, 2F ni adalah 4CM lah. Ha, jadi, ada dua cara. Sama ada letak kosong dekat F, 2CM dekat F sini. F is ya. from 1. Ha, okay. Ataupun, letak kosong dekat optical center, 4CM. Cari 4CM, guna pembaris, and then, tanda titik. Ha, so, bila 4CM tu, kita label dia 2F. Belah kanan 2F, belah kiri pun 2F. Okay? Ha, so, itulah cara uh, kita nak label. Kena guna pembaris. Kena measure. Focal length away and 2F is twice as far away. And this is a biconvex lens. So there is an F, a focal point, and a 2F on each side of the lens. And what we want to be able to do at the end of this video is you should be able to draw the ray diagram to locate the image for any place that we were to put the object. So this green arrow is our object. We're going to start beyond 2F. Then we're going to put the object at 2F, and then we're going to put it between F and 2F, and then F, and finally inside of F. And for any case, you should be able to draw the ray diagram to locate the image. And you should also really know where the image will be beforehand. You should really know that before you actually draw the ray diagram, you should have a sense about where the image is going to be. Okay, uh, so... Um ni objek lah ok uh, biasanya kita akan simbolkan objek kita dengan uh, simbol nak pandang macam ni ok jadi sekarang kedudukan objek ni adalah kurang daripada F ok bila kita lukis objek dekat atas F so maksudnya distance of object is equal to F kalau kita lukis objek dekat sini dekat sini adalah antara F dan 2F kan uh, jadi kita uh, tulis uh, U is Bigger than F but smaller than 2F. Kalau kita lukis objek berada pada titik 2F, uh, maka uh, U, U kan adalah jarak objek kan? So, U is equal to 2F. Uh, dan kalau objek di belakang 2F, kita buat U is greater than 2F. Okay. Uh, jadi, kita ada... Um, banyak uh, position kalau sekarang ni u less than f kalau kita lukis objek dekat sini kita akan dapat u equal to f kalau kita you have a sense about what the size of the image kalau kita lukis objek dekat sini u is bigger than f but smaller than 2f kalau objek dekat sini relative to the object uh, u is equal to 2f kalau objek dekat sini, U is bigger than 2F. 
So kita ada 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 5 kedudukan objek Ok ha, So um, Setiap kedudukan tu Akan produce Different characteristic of image The orientation and the type Is going to be a virtual or a real image Ok so let's go through And get started Here is our first problem You can see we have our object right here So sebelum tu sepadam semula lah okay. So dengar betul-betul ya Apa yang uh, Presenter dalam video ni nak cakap It's at a distance DO The object distance greater than 2F Okay, uh, so sekarang objek duduk belakang 2F Jadi um, awak nak guna simbol U pun boleh U tu adalah distance of object lah Ataupun nak buat D, O D adalah distance, O adalah objek uh, So, mana-mana je boleh And we're going to draw the ray diagrams to locate the image Now before we get started, we're going to go over the convex lenses in this video And then we'll do concave mirrors in the next video And then concave concave lenses and convex mirrors finally in the fourth video and you should really notice that for all of the ray diagrams for all four of those optical objects both mirrors and both lenses the ray diagrams are really drawn basically exactly the same way there's slight variations to how you do it but we can use the same rules for all four of those types of uh, lenses and mirrors so you don't have to really memorize all of them you just have to know how to apply the rules to each case, and in each case, um, the rules are basically the same. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to draw three rays to locate the image. This is the object, this is the lens, this is your eye. We have to draw three rays that come through the lens in the direction of your eye so that you can locate the image. The first ray we draw is the parallel ray. It enters the lens parallel to the principal axis. So once again, this is the principal axis. This is the first ray. You can see those two are parallel. We draw the first ray parallel. When it comes out of the lens, it's refracted or bent in such a way that it goes through the focal point. It must go through this point. It's not just some random bend. It goes through the focal point. So that's the first ray. I like to call this one parallel F. The next one is kind of the opposite. It enters the lens going from the object through the focal point. So it must go through the focal point. It starts at the object, goes through the focal point, strikes the center of the lens, and comes out parallel. So this one I like to call parallel F. And the third one is the one we draw that goes straight through the center, and the image is going to be located where those light rays converge, and that is our image. Okay? Now, we want to summarize where is the image and all the information that we wanted about the image. In this case, when the object is greater than 2F away, the image will always be somewhere between F and 2F. The image will always be smaller than the object. Okay, uh, so diminish ni uh, menunjukkan bahawa size image adalah lebih kecil daripada size object. Okay, uh, awak boleh... Uh, boleh tulis smaller ataupun diminish okay. Bagi siapa yang tak tahu maksud diminish ni uh, Ianya adalah semakin kecil lah Become smaller Image is smaller than size of object okay, Dekat mana nak lukis image Lukis dekat intersect ketiga-tiga cahaya yang kita lukis tadi tu Intersect dekat situ uh, So at that intersect adalah kepala Kaki dia tarik ke Uh, principle axis So dia terbalik lah okay. Objek kepala ke atas Tapi image kepala ke bawah So macam mana nak explain benda tu The image will always be inverted or up Okay So bila kepala ke bawah Kita sebut dia sebagai Inverted Song sang Okay Side down And will always be a real image Okay, okay. Real tu adalah sebab Objek duduk belah kiri kantar Image duduk di sebelah kanan kantar Ha, so, uh, image tu adalah real 
Jadi apa yang kita tulis ni diminish inverted real ni ini adalah characteristic of image form. Ah jadi bila objek duduk dekat uh, distance of object is greater than 2f the characteristic of image form will be diminished inverted and real. Jadi kalau dalam soalan objektif dia dia boleh uh, tanya dan dia bagi pilihan jawapan lah A, B, C, D kalau soalan structure dia suruh kita lukis lah dia akan dia suruh kita lukis biasanya dia akan bagi gambar rajah lens dan objek yang garisan cahaya warna biru objek eh, uh, image akhir ni dan karakteristik ni kita yang kena tulis ha, jadi kena tengok betul-betul uh, video tadi macam mana dia ajar First kali parallel to the principal axis, lepas tu pergi pada F. Yang kedua lalu ikut F, lepas tu uh, parallel to the principal axis. Yang ketiga lalu je straight ikut optical center. Dan ketiga-tiga cahaya tu akan intersect dekat satu titik sahaja. Okay? Uh. Okay, so we've completed that problem. I'm just going to review this one really quick and then we'll go on and we won't take as much time for the next one. So we got four more to do. So we drew the ray diagram. We drew the first ray, parallel F. Then we went F, parallel, has to go through F, has to go through F, has to be parallel and has to be parallel to the principal axis. This one goes straight through the center. It goes through the center lens. It is not bent. It is not refracted. And the image will be located at the uh, where those three rays intersect. We started at the point, therefore that's the image of the point. And this is the information that we drew from our, uh, that we got from our ray diagram. Okay, let's go on and do the next one. Now you can see the object distance. The object is exactly 2F from the lens, parallel F, F, parallel, straight through the center, and that is our image. You will notice when the object is at 2F, the image will always be at 2F. The image distance is 2F. It has to be there. The image will always be the same size. When your object is at 2F, the image is the same size. It will always be inverted or upside down, and it will always be a real image, an image that is created by converging light rays. Okay, here's the next one. Now we've moved it a little closer. Now we're between F and 2F. Parallel F, F, parallel, straight through the center. There's our image. The image is going to be beyond 2F. So now when the object is between F and 2F, the image is going to be greater than 2F away from the lens, always. The image will always be bigger. It will, first it was smaller, then it was the same size, and now it's magnified, it's bigger. But it will always be inverted, and it will always be a real image. Okay, now the next one is a little bit of a different case, although we're going to apply the rules the same way. Now the object is at F. We've gotten closer. The object is right at F. We're going to draw the first ray the same way, parallel out through F. Now we can't really draw the second one because that would be the F parallel. We would go straight down. We wouldn't really go parallel. It doesn't go through the lens. It doesn't come towards our eye, so we're going to ignore it. But we can draw the third one. We're going to draw the third ray that goes straight through the center of the lens like that. Has to go through this point. You will notice these light rays are parallel. Parallel light rays don't intersect. In all of the previous cases, the image occurred where the light rays intersected. So no intersection, you guessed it, no image. So when the object is at 2F, there is no image because the light rays are parallel. Okay? Last one. Now we've brought the object inside of F. We're inside the focal point. This is the focal point. We're inside the focal point, and we're going to draw the first ray exactly the same. Parallel F. Once again, we can't really draw. We can, but we wouldn't really use it to locate the image, the one that goes through F. One goes like this, but it doesn't go through the lens. It doesn't come to our eye. We don't see it, so we don't really need it but we can draw the third one, which goes straight through the center. You'll notice it goes straight through the center. It has to go through the center of, the point of this uh, lens. Now you will notice these light rays are not converging. They're not parallel. They are diverging. These are diverging light rays. Your eye is over here. It sees these diverging light rays coming into it. Your brain does not know that this light ray made this bend. It was not refracted right here. 
So it assumes these light rays travel in a straight line and it follows them back looking for the intersection. And you will notice if we trace them back, you will notice that they actually converge behind the lens. And that is where the image appears. Now you'll notice something in this case. <clears throat> it's behind the lens. It's on the other side. The other images were always between our eye and the lens. This one is on the other side of the lens, behind the lens, not in front of the lens. And that's our image. The image, when you're inside the focal length, when the object is less than f away from the lens, will always be behind the lens. It will always be magnified or bigger. It will always be right side up. Now it's switched from inverted to erect. And it, this is called a virtual image. A virtual image is an image that is created by diverging light rays. So this is what we call a virtual image. The light doesn't actually come from here, but that is what we call a virtual image uh, produced by diverging light rays. Okay, and this is actually what we have. This is called a magnifying glass. When you use a magnifying glass, you bring the magnifying glass, the lens, really close to the page if you're looking at a piece of paper, whatever you're looking at, and it looks in, uh, right side up and magnified. That's called a magnifying glass. Okay, so we've gone through all five cases you can now draw the, uh, the ray diagrams for any case to locate the image. Using okay, uh, tadi kan uh, daripada yang pertama sampai yang ketiga, semua image terbentuk di belah kanan. So, karakteristik dia adalah real. Tapi bila image terbentuk belah kiri, dia akan jadi virtual. Uh, okay, jadi itu uh, antara pelajar Kena ingat lah, ok, bila intersect uh, belah kanan, image dia adalah real, bila intersection berlaku di belah kiri, uh, kita panggil dia sebagai virtual. Dan kalau objek tu lebih besar daripada, kalau saiz image lebih besar daripada saiz objek, kita sebut dia sebagai magnified. Ok. A convex lens. Now, I'm going to go through this one table, looks a little confusing kind of summarize what we learned in a uh, so ini table uh, conclusion lah uh, tadi kita lukis satu-satu untuk dapatkan uh, karakteristik image dan um, kemudian kita boleh simpulkan macam ni ok, kalau yang boleh hafal, hafal lah tapi sebenarnya tak perlu hafal apa yang kita uh, perlu buat adalah asah skill uh, untuk melukis Ray diagram. Our ray diagrams. This is for a convex lens. This is for a concave mirror. It's going to be in the second video of the series, but I want you to compare the answers for the convex lens to the concave mirror. This is the object distance. These are the five that we went through. Here's the image distance, the orientation, the size, and the type. Now here's the same thing for the concave mirror, which we'll do in the next video. Here's the object distance, there's five of them. Here's the image distance, the orientation, the size, and the type of the image. You will notice we have 2F, 2F, this is C and C. C is the analogous point for a concave mirror. This lens has a focal point, this mirror has a focal point. This has 2F, which is twice as far away from the lens. This has C, it's the center of curvature for a spherical mirror. It's the same thing. It's the same kind of point. It's analogous to the 2F on the lens. Okay, so you should notice these are the answers that we came up with as far as the information for the image. You should notice that the answers on this uh, table for the convex lens and the answers on this table for the concave mirror are exactly the same. For example, when the object is at, two, at 2F, the image is at 2F. When the object is at C, the image is at C. When the object is at 2F, it's inverted, it's the same size, and it's real. When we're at C, it's inverted, the same size, and real. So all of the answers are the same. Another example, when you're at F, no image. When you're at F, no image. So you don't have to memorize all of the answers or 10 different sets of answers for the convex lenses and the concave mirrors. If you know the pattern for one, then you'll know the pattern for the other, 
because the answers are exactly the same, except we have a point we call two. Okay. Uh, jadi kalau awak boleh refer buku teks muka surat 256. Uh, dekat situ, uh, dia bagi um, 6 play diagram untuk uh, posisi objek yang berbeza berserta dengan uh, ray diagram berserta dengan image position and the characteristic of image ha, jadi kalau kita tengok dalam kutex tu macam macam senang kan okay. jadi pelajar kena praktis lah kena ikut rule uh, melukis uh, ray diagram tu ok so apa beza real and virtual real ni kalau objek tu terbentuk di belah kanan virtual kalau image tu terbentuk di belah kiri maksudnya objek belah kiri image belah kanan so itu real kalau objek belah kiri image pun belah kiri itu adalah virtual jadi sama jugalah kalau objek belah kanan image pun belah kanan So, dia virtual. Maksudnya, bila objek duduk di sebelah yang sama dengan image, so the image is virtual. Kalau kedudukan image tu, uh, di bahagian yang bertentangan dengan objek, itu kita panggil real. So, that is the difference between real and virtual image. Okay. Ah uh, Dan uh, tambahan, Real tu adalah image falls onto any screen. Maksudnya image tu terbentuk lah pada screen. Kalau virtual, dia tidak terbentuk pada screen. The image can only be seen inside the glass or mirror. Ha, macam kita guna kanta pembesar, kan? Bila kita guna kanta pembesar, kita akan tengok lah tulisan yang kita tulis tu adalah lebih besar. Tapi, dia tak terbentuk pada screen dia terbentuk dalam kanta tu lah maksudnya bila kanta tu lalu tulisan tu akan jadi besar ok ha, macam ni kalau yang terbentuk pada screen uh, ni objek ni image ada screen lepas tu Macam projector dalam uh, magma tu Kan bila, bila cikgu nak mengajar guna slide kan Cikgu tarik dia punya screen yang warna putih tu And then awak pun tengok uh, tulisan terbentuk pada uh, screen uh, So itu adalah real image lah uh, Tapi virtual uh, macam gini Dia tak ada screen Tapi bila kita gun halakan kanta pembesar dekat tulisan Tulisan tu kelihatan besar Maksudnya dia tak ada screen. Kita boleh tengok sekali imbas macam itulah. Itulah beza real and virtual. Okay, so yang ni awak boleh refer buku teks muka surat 256. Ada 6 ray diagram. Bagi 6 kedudukan objek yang berbeza. Bila objek duduk dekat antara F dan 2F, kita buat macam ni lah. U lebih besar daripada F, lebih kecil daripada 2F. So, this is the po the position of image. Uh, image terbentuk di belakang 2F. So, V is greater than 2F. Ataupun image beyond 2F. And the characteristic dia adalah real. Sebab objek belah kiri ni, image belah kanan. So, real. Inverted sebab dia terbalik. Objek kepala ke atas, image kepala ke bawah. So, inverted. Magnified sebab apa? Sebab uh, size image lebih besar daripada size objek. So, dia magnified lah. Ha, dan ni untuk concave lens pula. Concave lens senang je. Ok, kita ada dua posisi um, objek lebih besar daripada 2F. Lebih besar tu maksudnya kalau uh, F 2cm 2F 4cm objek ni duduk pada kedudukan 5cm. Ha, maksudnya objek 5cm 2F ni baru 4cm. So, 5 lebih besar daripada 4 kan? So, sebab itulah kita buat simbol U greater than 2F. Okay. So, characteristic of image dia adalah virtual, upright and diminished. So, untuk concave lens, awak letaklah dekat mana-mana pun ob objek, image yang akan terbentuk satu je karakteristik dia. 
virtual, upright and diminish. Jadi, kalau awak jumpa je, what is the characteristic of image form by the concave lens? Ah, tak ya, tak payah fikir panjang. Kalau dia hanya suruh kita tulis karakteristik, so tulis virtual, upright and diminish. Tapi kalau uh, soalan tu suruh kita draw the ray diagram for the question above, contoh. Uh, so, kena lukis lah satu garisan parallel to the principal axis, kena pada kantar. Lepas tu, ambil daripada F, buat letter line, kena pada garisan tadi, lepas tu sambung, straight. Uh, yang seterusnya, Daripada objek, terus je pada optical center. Lepas tu dah ada intercept kan? Ha, so, dekat intercept tu lah objek. Intercept dia ke atas. So, kepala dia ke atas lah. Sebab tu lah dia upright. Ha, dan image ni kecil. So, diminish. Sama juga. Kalau letak U uh, kecil daripada F pun. Maksudnya F 2cm. U mungkin kita buat 1.4cm. Okay. So, 1.4 cm lebih kecil lah daripada 2 cm. So, karakteristik of objek dia pun sama. Virtual upright and diminish. So, senang untuk concave lens. Untuk convex lens, uh, ada 6 gambar rajah yang berbeza dan 6 ke 6, 6 tu mempunyai karakteristik yang berbeza juga. Ok, so sekarang kita masuk kepada linear magnification. Apa benda linear magnification ni? When an object is seen through a magnifying glass at a distance less than its focal length, the image form is magnified. Tengok kan? Mulut dia nampak besar. Sebab image dia tu dibesarkan daripada objek yang sebenar. Okay? So, kita panggil dia sebagai magnified. The image is magnified. The size of the image formed by a convex lens depends on the position of the object. Ha. Awak record balik video yang Uh, Mak Salah tu cakap tadi, tengok balik muka surat 256. Lain uh, kedudukan objek, lain lah uh, size image yang akan terbentuk kalau convex lens. Kalau concave lens, karakteristik dia sama, duduk kat mana-mana pun. Ok, uh, so ada lagi aktiviti yang seterusnya. The last activity is to generate ideas on magnification of image with the help of ray diagrams. So, uh, para pelajar boleh scan QR code ni untuk lihat simulation of magnification of image. Okay, so now we want to compare between image size and object size based on the ratio of image height to object height. Okay, uh, so object, ketinggian dia daripada kaki bawah ni sampailah kepala, kita ukur berapa ketinggian dia. So, H2 adalah height, O tu adalah objek. Ha, bila kita ukur ketinggian objek, kita buat HO lah, H objek. Lepas tu ada image kan? So, kita ukur daripada kaki dia ni, atas prinsipal axis ni, sampailah ke kepala dia tu, itu adalah uh, size of image. So, HI. H2 adalah height, I tu adalah image. Ha, so, bila kita dah ukur, Dua tu kita boleh cari linear magnification. Formula untuk linear magnification adalah M equal to, M tu adalah linear magnification sama dengan image of height. Ha, maksudnya, uh, ketinggian image bahagi dengan ketinggian objek. So, katakanlah ketinggian uh, image adalah 4cm, ketinggian objek adalah 2cm. So, 4 bagi 2 So, the magnification dia adalah 2. Dia tidak ada unit. Ok. Ha, sebab apa? Sebab uh, height 4 cm. Cm. Ok. Katakanlah. Uh, panjang image adalah 4 cm. Objek 2 cm. So, bila kita masukkan dalam formula. Hi 4 cm bahagi dengan HO 2 cm. So cm cm potong 4 bagi 2 dapat 2. Ah so magnification tak tidak ada unit. Hanya ada nilai sahaja. 
so the ratio of image height to object height is also the same as the ratio of image distance to object distance. Uh, jadi, um, ada dua formula lah kita boleh buat M sama dengan tinggi image bahagi tinggi objek ataupun sama dengan jarak image bahagi jarak objek. Uh, maksudnya, image duduk atas, objek duduk bawah. Tak kira lah kalau kita nak compare Height, uh, so dua-dua height lah, height image bagi height object. Kalau kita nak compare jarak, jarak image bagi jarak object. Okay, uh, so ada dua formula uh, to find the linear magnification is whether we use uh, the height of image over height of object ataupun the distance of image over distance of object. Jawapan dia kita akan dapat sama saja. Okay. Kalau bila kita calculate, M is equal to 0 point something something. Tak sampai 1. So, maksudnya image yang terhasil adalah diminish. Image diminish. Ha, maksudnya image tu lebih kecil daripada ob objek. Ha. Contoh, uh, ketinggian objek 2 cm. Ketinggian image 1 cm. So, 1 bagi 2 dapat 0.5 kan? 0.5 tu kurang daripada 1. Uh, so, bila M is less than 1, the image is diminished. If M is equal to 1, maksudnya height of image 2 cm, height of object pun 2 cm. So, 2 bagi 2 dapat 1. Uh, so, maksudnya image same size as object. Size of image is equal to size of object. And last kali, M greater than 1. Uh, 4 bagi 2. Ketinggian image 4 cm. Ketinggian objek 2 cm. So, 4 bagi 2 dapat 2. So, 2 tu lebih besar daripada 1. Means that image is magnified. Okay. So, last kali formative practice. You have try by your own first. And then discuss uh, with your teacher. Okay. So, that's all. Um, untuk video kali ni iaitu mengenai image formation by lenses. Jadi apa yang paling penting adalah para pelajar mesti kena boleh lukis. Ikut video yang Mak Saleh ajar tu. Ah video yang Mak Saleh ajar tu. Objek macam first step macam mana lepas tu nak tulis macam mana. Okey. Ah so kalau orang rasa macam tak faham lagi recall balik pergi balik pada bahagian explanation how to draw the ray diagram. Okay, nama dia ray diagram lah. Okay, so itu sahaja. Thank you for your attention and I hope uh, you will get something from this video and you will learn a lot. Okay, so Assalamualaikum.